Hey, buckle up. Father Bame is recording a daily mass homily. There must be something going on here. So, here we go. We are continuing uh, our reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. We've been in the letter to the Ephesians for about the last week and a half, two weeks or so. And we now get to, in a certain sense, kind of the, the capstone, if you will, of this letter, Ephesians chapter 6. And Paul has this line, with all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the Spirit, that speech, skipping a line here, that speech may be given to me to open my mouth, to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador in chains, that, so that I may have the courage to speak as I must. I make those words of St. Paul my own today. As I said, here we go. Okay. St. Paul, in this letter, is talking, at least in this particular chapter, and he's been building up to it, is talking about spiritual warfare. It's a, it's a topic that we need to discuss. It's, what's he talking about? It says, draw your strength from the Lord, from his mighty power. Put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. The tactics of the devil. And he goes on, he says, For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. What in the world are principalities and powers? Those are two of the nine choirs of angels. Now, obviously, St. Paul is not talking about good angels. They are very much on our side. And there are principalities and powers that are fighting with us and for us. But there are principalities and powers that have fallen and that are now demons, just like there are seraphim and cherubim and thrones and dominions and virtues and archangels and angels that have fallen. He's talking just because, you know, parchment and a, and a little pen limits, you know, you can't say all nine. So he just puts two in here. That's what our struggle is against. So we've got to understand that. We have to understand what this battle is about. And then he tells us what to do. Put on the armor of God, that you may be able to resist on the evil day, and having done everything, to hold your ground, to stand your ground. You ever see The Lord of the Rings? If you haven't, you need to watch it. Remember that scene where Aragorn is at the, the, the Black Gate, and he's got this big battle is going to happen, and Aragorn comes out, and he's on his horse, and he says, stand your ground. Stand your ground. Remember, Tolkien is a Catholic. J.R. Tolkien, the author of The Lord of the Rings, is a devout Catholic. And he's telling a Catholic story. And so in this scene, I, I suspect he probably has this, this passage from the letter to the Ephesians in mind. That we must stand our ground against evil. And Paul tells us how to do it. Gird your loins with the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus Christ. He tells us that. John chapter 14. I am the way and the truth and the life. He also tells us the truth himself. He himself will set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Satan, on the other hand, is the father of lies. And so Paul is setting up this very stark dichotomy between God on one hand and the evil one on the other. He says, be clothed with righteousness as a, blessed, as a breastplate, your feet shod in readiness for the gospel. He says, hold faith as your shield, that you may deflect the flaming arrows, who of the evil one? Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, and he tells us what that is. It is the word of God. Paul very clearly sees that we are in the midst of a battle. A real battle. And there are souls that die. And they die forever. There are souls that live. And they live forever. But this is what is at stake. We have to understand that. 
I think all too often in our own faith, we can sort of get in this mold and this idea that, well, faith is just about being nice. And as long as we just talk to people very nicely and say nice things and we have some flowers or something around here, then all is well. And that's just not the case. That's just simply not the case. We hear about it in the psalm. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for battle, my fingers for war. That was the first verse of our psalm. And then Jesus takes this and ties it all together. And he says to the Pharisees, Behold, I cast out demons. Jesus himself understands that this battle is going on. Now, why do I say this? Well, one, because these are the readings of the day. But two, because I think we are very much living in the midst of it right now. Okay, if you've heard me preach at all since the beginning of this pandemic, you've heard me talk about this. But in a particular way, if you've heard me talk at all about Antifa, you've also heard me say this. And I'll say it again. Antifa is demonic. I'll say it very clearly. Antifa is a demonic organization. They are absolutely 100%, I guarantee it, inspired and influenced by Satan. I don't know how else I can be any clearer on that. They are absolutely 100% influenced by Satan. Why do I say that? Not to scare anybody, okay? Not to scare anybody, but to remind ourselves what is at stake. To remind ourselves what this struggle is with, but also to point us to hope. Because Jesus Christ is victorious, and we must not forget that. We must not lose sight of the fact that Jesus Christ has conquered sin and death. There is no doubt about who is victorious in this battle. The only question is who is going to be standing with him in the end. That's it. So, tie this all together. And I realize I'm taking a little bit longer. I'm giving you kind of a Sunday homily on a Thursday, but this is important stuff. Sorry, forgive me. Tie this all together. There was a woman named Bella Dodd, okay, if you're familiar with Bella Dodd. Bella Dodd emerged from the communist movement and basically wrote a tell-all book about how the communist movement tried and succeeded to infiltrate every aspect of society, including the church. I mean, this happened, okay? The church has been very clear that communism is 100% antithetical to the gospel. So just as Antifa, I guarantee you, is inspired by demons, so was communism. Marx, Stalin, I guarantee you, completely under the influence of demons. So was Hitler, so was Mussolini, okay? In fact, if you know your history, Pope Pius XII, in the middle of World War II, authorized and asked priests throughout Europe together on a, on a particular day to turn towards Germany and all together collectively pray the Leonine Prayer of Exorcism, what we typically refer to as chapter 3 of the Roman ritual. Pope Pius XII authorized that because he knew what was going on. He understood what was happening. Pope Leo XIII, in his encyclical Rerum Novarum, very clearly said Catholics cannot be socialists. Pope John Paul II in his encyclical Centesimus Annus very clearly said Catholics cannot be communists, and also both of them at the same time, we have to say this, said that Catholics cannot be, like, for lack of a better way of saying it, income-greedy capitalists, okay? So just as socialism and communism are antithetical to the gospel, so is capitalism. And we see all of this playing out how communism has influenced every area of society, every facet of society. The leading exorcist in the world today is a man by the name of Father Chad Ripperger. He lives in Denver. Father Ripperger, for the last month and a half, has been putting out little four- and five-minute videos on YouTube every day, talking about the influence of communism in the world today and how communism is influenced by demons. And he's talking about this from experience. This is a man that spends 40 hours a week doing nothing but exorcisms. That's, that's his whole ministry. Look him up. He's on YouTube. Good guy. But why do I say this? Put it all together. We are in the midst of this struggle. We're in the midst of this battle. And I know we, we might tend to think, okay, this is all pointing towards Tuesday, and it's not. Okay, lest we think that Tuesday, meaning election day, is the solution, it is not. St. Paul is very clear about that. 
Okay, what does St. Paul say? Hold faith as a shield. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Okay, Paul doesn't mention anywhere in, in his letter to the Ephesians on spiritual warfare, as far as I can tell, anything about Donald Trump, the Republican Party, Joe Biden, or the Democratic Party. He has nothing to say about it because he realizes that our salvation is not in them. Our salvation is in him. Our salvation is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has already been victorious. What's the net result? Who's standing with him in the end? Will you stand with Jesus? Will I stand with Jesus? Jesus Christ is victorious. Will you, will I be with him?